Hello everybody, this is Greg from Rio Grande, and today we're going to talk about Formlabs CW40 castable resin. So the name is CW40, which stands for castable wax, and the 40 obviously refers to the percentage of wax that's in it. And at 40%, you can actually feel it. It has a tacky... Uh, tackiness to it, which is actually similar to the feel of a regular injection wax. So it's very similar in feel. Okay, so let's take a look at the resolution of these prints. Traditionally, or in the past, when resins were engineered to be castable, uh, that meant that the resolution was softer, detail was less sharp, but that's not the case here. So let's take a look at these. Nice, crisp, points, tiny prongs. Look at these holes. You can see in the gallery here. These little nubs that are on here, these are from the supports. Don't worry about that. And then let's look at the lettering on this. Look how sharp and crisp this is. These are nice and deep. Even this tiny little line, that's less than a half a millimeter thick. That came out nice. I do want to mention a couple of other little things. Number one, since this material is so soft, you will need to add more supports, or you can make them bigger, uh, or you can make them bigger and more dense. It's up to you. Number two, it can be difficult to remove supports on delicate models like this gallery work here, so take your time. One idea is possibly even grow a second one of these if you have the capacity or the time, uh, because when you're removing these supports, it's, it's easy to snap or break things. Uh, another idea is to put these models into the cure for 30 minutes, but without any heat. That will stiffen them up just a little bit, maybe make them a little stronger when you're removing supports. It might help. Okay, number three. So we keep talking about how soft this material is and how much wax it has in it, and we found out that when we are scraping parts off of it, if you try to use a very sharp blade, which I tried to do in the beginning, when you scrape it, it leaves this, this layer on here behind as you remove them, right? And so I was trying to scrape this off, and it's very hard to get off like this. I actually found an easier way to get it off, and I use a less sharp, flat, typical old-fashioned scraper, it's faster, it's quicker, and it doesn't leave that, that little bit behind. Now I know a lot of the casters out there that are saying, I like all these fine details, that's great, but how does it cast? So let's take a look. Here we have the same models that we saw earlier. We made a little tree out of them. And you can see things that are traditionally difficult, like look at these little stone seats. All of these holes came out. They're not filled. They're not broken out. Those are usual problems. Details on the lettering. Look at how deep this stuff, nice and deep, sharp, crisp letters. This is amazing. And look at these little tiny letters, or these little tiny stone seats right here. These are some tiny micro pave prongs. Little tiny seats, all those holes came out. That's amazing. So now let me talk about the steps that I went through to get this cast. All right, so I'm gonna start out by adding, adding a feed sprue to one of these 3D prints of the Rio ring. I always try to add as big a sprue, feed gate or feed sprue as I can to the heaviest section. Like most people will wanna put a sprue down here because it's easy to but that's, you can see it's a much thinner area. This top area is much heavier, so you want to kind of feed to that. You obviously don't want to feed into this where the lettering is. So you want to try to find a place that's easy to remove. This will be pretty easy to remove here. So I'm going to just go ahead and add that. I've already trimmed it at kind of an angle, so it'll go straight. Uh, no, I'm just going to cut this off. I just push my fingernail into it and twist it. That's an easy way to cut them. Now I found that uh, the sticky wax, I've always liked using it. Um, 
It works great for attaching. Just think of it like a glue or like a hot glue gun. You have attached that. Now you can't just stop there. You have to make a nice transition. So you want to create what we call a, like a little fillet going around here. So I'm just kind of giving it a nice blended. So it's got a nice flow. And I'm going to just let that cool for a second. Okay, so now you can see we have a whole bunch of uh, rings here that we're going to attach to this uh, main, main sprue. One of the things you have to consider when you're attaching is how tall you can go. You don't want to, you want to try to stay about, oh, uh, at least like a half an inch from the top or so. And when I push this down over, actually, this is going to be about the same height. So when I push this down onto the rubber base, I've actually got a lot of room there, you can see. I would say there's at least two inches there. So I can have these pieces sticking up beyond this, the top of this tree by a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have them extend a little beyond there. I always like to make the sprues extra long, so that gives me room. And I'm going to have them sticking out at about this angle here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my fingernail and press in at the right angle, about the right spot. And that's going to touch about like that. So now let me do that. I'm going to go ahead and screw this down for some stability. And I'm going to add some of this sticky wax a little bit onto here. And the first time when you're trying to get this height right, you might adjust a little bit. I'm just kind of pressing it with my finger, trying to get it in the right position. So I'm thinking about there's a good height. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. Um, another thing is you want to think about is how far this is sticking out this way. Because you cannot go beyond the inside of this rubber this is where the flask sits down in. And the flask has a thickness too. And then uh, you don't want to get too close to that. You need about a sixteenth of an inch or eighth of an inch or so. So what I do is I like to take a spacer of some sort. I'm just using a pencil. So you can angle it out a little bit more. And then once I build up the entire tree, I'll just go around with the pencil and make sure it's not hitting. So that way when I put the base or the, uh, the flask on it, it will clear it. I'm just going to go back now and I'm going to seal up around there just like we did on the the feed gate to the piece. Now I'm going to do the main sprue too. And I'm just going to make sure it's all sealed up. Go around it. You want a nice transition. You don't want to have any holes in there because once you start putting investment in, if you had a hole up in there, investment would go up in there. Then when the wax burned away, you would have this little investment spike that was sticking up in there that went into the hole. And then when your metal flowed in, it would snap, it could snap that little investment spike off and swirl around in your metal and cause uh, bad surface quality or inclusions in the metal. I just realized that I did something wrong on this particular ring. See how it's got the, the words Rio and it's pointed down. That's going to create an air pocket where bubbles can get trapped. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of warm this up a little bit down here. And then I can, because I want this to, f to turn upwards so that air doesn't get trapped. So I'm just going to turn it like that. So now from this direction, you can see bubbles can just come up. They're not going to get trapped. Okay, so now that we've attached all of the, the rings to the tree, as you can see, we've got, I don't know how many, about seven or eight of them on there. Uh, we need to get a weight. We need to figure out how much this weighs so we can calculate the amount of metal needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh the entire thing. And that looks like uh, 1595. 
Next, we need to attach this down to the base. You want to screw this down nice and tight. Now, like I said before, we want to make sure that we have room for the flask. When you fit the flask down, it's not going to bump into any of these things. And I just use a pencil as a spacer. It's kind of close right here, but I think it might be okay. If not, I can always heat that up a little bit and push it upward, but I think it'll be okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the flask on the top. That's down nice and tight. And as I put it on, I'm looking down the top to see, and you can see the spacing here around, right? You can see how close that is or how far. And you want to make sure this is a, this even before you push it down because lifting it off and on is kind of a hard, a hard fit and you don't want to fight it because you can easily bump into one of these things and snap them because the wax is kind of brittle. Okay, so there, it's nice and straight, tight. And you can look down and you can see, see how much room we have around everything from the inside wall. And then I'm just going to add this extender onto the top. That way when we mix up the investment and it bubbles up, it won't overflow and it'll all flow back down in. And we're ready to go invest. I hope you found this information helpful and in case you want to try to duplicate my results there is a document attached below that has all the specifics and if you have any other questions contact us.